Hi guys, so once upon a time, there was this man who was in a relationship with this beautiful young lady. These people dated for three years and finally they decided that it was time to take it to the next step, to get married, to have some kids and to settle down. And so they decided to start the processes. During the process, they found out that something they should have found out three years ago, <laughs> they found out three years after that they couldn't get married. Now this was a shocker. This broke the man, he was crying, and for a couple of weeks, he just couldn't get over it. And you know that men don't cry, usually. But this man was broken down. So today, I'm giving you nine things you should know before you decide to get married to that special person. So stay tuned. So the first thing you have to know is your sickle cell status and your partner's sickle cell status. Funny, but a lot of people I have asked that, what is your sickle cell status? Do not really know it. So I don't know whether it's just the people around me or just generally people don't really know much about it, but it's very important to know your sickle cell status because medically you may not be compatible using that. And if you go ahead, if you are a sickle cell career and you go ahead to marry a sickle cell career, you will have children and then maybe some of the children, if they are fully sickle cell may go through a lot of pain and may go through a lot of suffering because of that decision so medically if you ask any doctor they will tell you that it's best that if you're a career or a sickle cell career you should not marry a sickle cell career if you don't know this before and you get invested <laughs> emotionally with a sickle cell career and you are too you will have children and then there'll be pain and everything which will not necessarily be worth it i know yes we can pray and everything <laughs> yes that is also another option but the best thing to do is to know this and avoid a situation like that. So the next one, number two is blood type or blood group. So I found out when I was getting married that it's very important to know about each other's blood type or blood groups because some of them are not compatible enough and they may affect pregnancy and other complications actually when you want to conceive. And so it's very important to know each other's blood group or especially go see a doctor and ask if you guys are compatible in that aspect and know what to do next from then. So if so far the blood type and the sickle cell status, if you're finding it hard understanding, I suggest that you go read more about it or talk to a medical expert and they will help you understand how important these two are. If you have come this far, thank you very much for staying. Don't forget to leave a like and if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. So we move on to our next one. Number three, I cannot stress on this enough. I mentioned it in one of my videos, 10 tips to a successful marriage, that faith is very important. And so you should know what your partner's faith is, what your faith is, what you believe in and see if com you are compatible because as much as it seems negligible during the dating period or during the relationship period, it becomes a problem in marriage when you have to make decisions that actually go against each other's faith. So if you have one faith, then you'd have probably one decision and it would be easier to make those decisions or it would be easier to actually be able to align with each other's purpose and with each other's thoughts. So I will not be able to stress this enough, but it's very important to have the same form of faith. Number four. So in <laughs> where I'm from, we say that you don't just marry the man, you marry the man's family, or you don't just marry the woman, you marry the woman's family. So it's important to know what kind of family you are marrying into. Not just the nuclear family it has to go beyond you have to do your research find out what kind of members your partner is in the same family with because as much as you may think oh it's just the two of us we're just in love okay when you get married family members sometimes have a say in what you do as much as you wouldn't like it it gets to points where they have a say and you cannot do anything about it so if you go and marry into a form of family that you will not like or goes against maybe something that you believe in then in the end well as i say divorce to me is not an option but if you're willing to just be divorced well <laughs> that is your option but i think it's better to be able to find out what even what kind of relationship your spouse has 
with their family members is very important is the person too close to their family is the person far away do they have family issues what's what where did they come from sometimes i mean you don't have to go to people are not so comfortable going too deep when they are especially when they are not married but find a way of finding out the basics of what is going on in the family because you will be part of that family you'll be part of that trouble eventually you may have to take sides if there are issues but if you end up finding out that it's a good family everybody's warm everybody's then it means you'll be part of that happiness you'll be part of that joy so it's very important to know which family you are marrying into it's not just about the man and then the woman it's not just about you and then your guy or you and your lady don't deceive yourself because when you enter, you realize that it's a whole community you got married to. Number five, very important. You have to find out if that person wants children or not. That's the first thing you have to know because some people just assume that maybe from where we're from, everybody wants children. But there are some people I have met who tell me that, no, I don't want children. I don't think my tummy, I don't want my tummy to carry a child. I will find another way of having a child. But if you don't communicate this early and you get married to somebody who probably doesn't want children, then there'll be a lot of issues. There'll be friction. Eventually, your relationship may die. So it's very important to talk about it. If you want children, you both want children, how many children do you want? Does one want 10 children? I met a guy who told me he wanted 12 children. And I was like, okay. Um, okay. If you give birth to the six and your wife will give birth to the other six, that's cool. Because I don't see how in this morning they are going to ah, like, just give birth to the six. I'll give birth to the other six. And then like, we're good to go. Right. But anyway, <laughs> that person probably will have to deal with it with their current partner but then that's just by the way you have to find out do you want two some people want a whole community and somebody just wants one child so it can be a problem as much as it seems minor it can be a problem eventually in the future so you have to find out does the person want kids that does the person like kids does the person how many children does the person want to have so these things are very important and probably even how the person wants to train the children so kids are very important to talk about how the person wants to train the children how you think children should be raised should be part of that topic when you're talking about it and it's very important number six <laughs> is frequency and intimacy this has to do with how intimate your partner wants to get how many times you want to do the do when you get married um as much as i believe in do not have sex before you get married but it's a very important to actually talk about sex before you want to get married if one person doesn't have a high sex drive and another person does and you don't talk about it and you get married it's going to be a problem because sex is a very important part of marriage as much as it's not spoken about and so it's very important to know how many times will you want to do it if you go if you can't handle it just back out <laughs> if you can handle it you can see or you can find a way of compromising you discuss it and then you find out okay do you like hugging too much hugging do you like this you like that something that will be able to spark up your relationship when you're married you need to talk about it because mm, children are important sex is important basically your attitude is important these are very important things so it's very good to actually talk about it and to find out before it's too late because when you get in there and then maybe it's like ah i remember i watched this um series and then at the end of the series they interviewed some married couples and then i saw one man told his wife before they got married that i will have sex every day and the wife thought he was lying and she said after four years of having sex every day she finally felt fed up she was like ah, ah, no, did i come to this marriage just to be having sex and she started crying but the thing was he had told her before and so she like she should have taken his word for it right and now you decide that you're going to enter into marriage with someone who says he's going to have sex every single day and after four years or four years she has tried after four years she's crying i don't like it was just quite funny but in the end you have to discuss these kind of things that's the point 
number seven is duties so it's very important to talk about what you think your like you will do in the marriage or what your spouse should do in the marriage you have to discuss because you may get married and then maybe the woman feels like from her home the man is the one who always cooks but the man also from his home the woman is all the one who always cooks so in the end if you don't talk about these things and you get married and everybody's just there you have to talk about it then you know that okay maybe this person's um, expectation is too high i cannot meet it maybe then i will not take the next step or maybe we can find a way of compromising it's very important to speak about these things because when it's too late it's just too late right <laughs> Number eight, ambition. So you have to find out what your partner's ambition is. Does the person value work over home stuff? You understand? You don't want to go into a marriage where maybe the person's a bit relaxed and you find out that the person is relaxed when you're married. Then it's like you're disappointed. Or maybe the person is a workaholic and you cannot stand not having enough time. So you have to find out the person's ambition, what the person plans to achieve in a couple of years. You have to find out what the person has planned for their life so that you know that okay this is where the person stands and so can you do anything to help the person can you um, find a way of meeting each other halfway or find a way of supporting each other this is very important because we don't want any disappointments when we get married if you're able to reduce the number of things you're disappointed in it's be it's way better than to go in blinded and then you find out that there are some things you cannot cope with my last point which is actually just a very tiny point is find out if your partner has loans or debts <laughs> you don't want to go into marriage not knowing that the partner has a lot of debts like behind them and that they haven't settled and now probably like it comes ca crashing down or catching up with all of you and it's like it's a disappointment so money also should be talked about especially maybe the person has debts maybe the person has investment what is the person's um thoughts on investments what's the person's thoughts on um savings those kind of things loans you have to know all these things because you don't want to go into the marriage and find out that okay the person doesn't have a savings habit and maybe you feel like everyone should and then you're disappointed or the person took loans to support the person during um, their university times or at a point for a business and they haven't paid and then maybe they need support they marry you and you have to be that support system if you're capable you help but you just have to know about these things so that they don't take you by surprise these things are some of the things that you can talk about um during the time that you go out on dates or that when you are alone watching a movie you can bring it up whilst you are watching the movie or something it's not every day it's oh i love you i love you too i miss you i mean oh no hang up no you hang up no you no please these are very important things that you need to know <laughs> the rest can be done when you get married honestly <laughs> but these are very important things so i personally think that it's a very good thing that you get to know all these things so don't forget to check out my other videos i have a video on 10 tips to a happy marriage a successful marriage please don't forget to check it out so till another day say 